And in this lesson, I'll be showing you how to add unique backgrounds to your web pages with CSS. Um, I think the concept of adding backgrounds to your web pages is pretty self explanatory, so uh, let's go ahead and get down to it. Basically, if you're going to be concerned with adding unique backgrounds to your web pages in CSS, you need to know the three different ways to do it. <coughs> and the three different ways are. I will type them out for you right here. One, a solid background color, a stretched background image, or a repeated background image. And we're going to be discussing, excuse me, we're going to be discuss, discussing, <coughs> fighting a cough. <sighs> We're going to be discussing these three different types. So, the first one we're going to start with is a solid background color. And you'll see up here, I already have it declared. Now, we're going to start from scratch. If you want to actually add a background color, you do it within CSS. And if you don't know how, you have to add the style type equals text slash CSS tag right after the heading and before the closing. I hope that makes sense. And if you need to, just go ahead and pause it. It is left arrow style type equals text slash, slash CSS. So once you're in there, you need to declare the background color, right? Well, the part of the document that we're going to be modifying within CSS is the entire body because the background in CSS is attached to the body, uh, programmatically speaking. So CSS has a, a pre-default function or class for the body in specific because they know that people want to be able to modify things like this. So here's how you do it. You open up the body tag like I have and every time you open up a class within CSS you have to open up a curly bracket and a ending curly bracket. And I usually like to tab in by pressing tab on my keyboard, Dreamweaver lets me do that, and it keeps things spaced appropriately. So you don't have to, but uh, I like to do that. What we're going to do is type background. I'll move my cursor here. Background dash color colon. And at this point, you can really choose whatever color you want. But uh, for the sake of the tutorial, I'm just going to choose a you know 50% gray style color. And I believe from memory, that's 666. Six, six, six. The evil color. Well, there it is. And if you want to close off something like that, you do it with a semicolon. So I'm going to go to File and Save. Or, by default, you can actually, uh, you know, a shortcut is hit Control S on your keyboard. So you don't have to do that every time you want to save your document. But now we're just going to show you what this is here. I'm going to go up to Preview in Firefox, and there it is. So here's our document. It's got a, a dark, you know, 50% gray, relatively dark. Maybe it's 60%, I don't even remember. But uh, a dark gray. And in the center here, I have some text, you know, aligned with a div and a font class. Don't worry about that. But, uh, you know, because backgrounds are fun. They really are, once you get into things. And I'm going to prove it. So we're going to go back into Dreamweaver, and yeah, you can do a background color, but you want something more unique. You want to do something. You want to make it look pretty. So what you do, the order of this process is, you actually go into Photoshop, and you have to decide or know ahead of time the size of the document. Is it the size of your monitor? Because if you add a background image that's only the size of your monitor, and your resolution is, you know, 1,280 by 1,024 pixels, and somebody has a widescreen monitor, like a 1920 by 1200, and they come to your page, and it's it's a nice background image, but it's not stretched, and it's not a, it, it doesn't fit accordingly, so it would look really, really strange and out of place. Well, I'm going to show you how to fix that, but these are all things that you should know. So, 
yeah, the order of processes is usually just create your background image and uh, have an idea ahead of time whether it's going to repeat or whether it's not going to repeat. The first one we're going to do is actually not going to repeat. It's just going to be a relatively widescreen, large, uh, you know, background image. And that's about it. Um, you can actually get it to stretch, and I'm going to show you how. So we're going to delete this here, background color. And to do that, we're going to type background dash image. And I'm going to click browse just to browse to it. And you'll see here I have large.jpg and Dreamweaver automatically formats that for me and if I want it to stretch accordingly to the client who comes here so if somebody does have a you know 1280 by 1024 and this for example is a 1920 x 1200 um, it will actually size down but what you do is you go to size or I'm sorry you type background dash size colon space 100% and that will allow CSS to stretch your background along the X and Y axis according to the browser size. That's very useful. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. In fact, I'm going to hit Control S on my keyboard, go to Preview in Firefox, close my old one. But you can see, there it is. This is my background image. If I right click and click on View Background Image, there it is. And uh, because of that, you can see here, at these edges, it's out but uh, it would actually stretch and CSS does that for us because we use the background size 100% <coughs> so you know I got my text here yay backgrounds and uh, this text that was done in Photoshop so that's obviously you know looking a lot better and uh, that process can be repeated for any type of image you want so if you want to do you know frames for your websites and just have that be part of the background that is definitely doable I don't typically do that but uh, it is definitely doable so that's one that we got down what if you want to have a background image that repeats well you say Graham what would be the point of having a background image that repeats as opposed to having a really nice elaborate full image that stretches I'm gonna tell you right now the difference is that a background image which is large and which stretches is actually going to take the client longer to download so you usually have to save it in a lower quality so it's not as big of a size but there are some people with slower internet connections and they don't want to have to download that when they go there it'll, it'll flicker on after everything else is done downloading and most web 2.0 sites or sufficient sites today sophisticated I suppose is the right word actually use a background repeat method and to do that, you type background image URL the same way. And I believe I had one in the same directory called, by the way, the directory is relative to your document, which in this case I have called index.html. And it's in the same location, so I don't have to specify any subdirectories. Um, I'm just going to type thin repeat.jpg.jpg. And that's one that I created in Photoshop. It's really thin and it's long. And the advantage to that, as opposed to a really wide, large screen, elaborate background like we have with the clouds and the stars and things like that, is it doesn't take any time whatsoever to download. And CSS will repeat that along the x-axis for you, which means left to right, as opposed to y-axis, which means up and down. CSS will repeat it along the left to right axis or x-axis, axis, axi, for you and that's all processor based it doesn't have to download the image each time it wants to repeat it and I think the best way to show you what I'm talking about is to have it not repeat at first so I'm gonna type background dash repeat and I'm gonna say no repeat hit control s and then I'm gonna come up here to preview in Firefox and you'll see here's my background image but it doesn't repeat from left to right and that's okay so I'm gonna close this now and then I'm going to go back into Dreamweaver and I'm going to say instead of no repeat, I'm going to say repeat X. Now if I save it and I go back to preview it, there it is. It repeats from left to right and this would download a lot faster for people. You can still use the background dash size attribute for the background element in CSS so that if it's a smaller, it's not so thin, maybe it's 1024 pixels and it would only come down to about here. You can still use the size attribute to stretch it along the X and Y axis to 100% and that would work as well.